Ask any American who invented the light bulb, and chances are you'd hear the name Thomas Edison. Or, more recently, you might have heard the name Louis Latimer. Head over to the UK, and you'd be more likely to hear Joseph Swan. So, can we settle this debate once and for all? Who actually invented the light bulb? Be forewarned that if you came here rooting for one person, you're not going to like my conclusion. In the early 1800s, people knew about electricity, but we were only at the beginning of our ability to control it. There were no power plants or electrical grids, but there were batteries. In 1800, Alessandro Volta developed the voltaic pile, a primitive battery. Some sources say that Volta demonstrated a glowing copper wire connected to this battery. In 1802, the British chemist Sir Humphrey Davy did some experiments with platinum connected to an early battery. When he connected a piece of platinum across the battery, it would light up before melting. This is perhaps the first artificial electric light. In 1806, Sir Humphrey Davy showed that if you put two pieces of carbon or charcoal close to each other and run electricity through them, they will create an arc through the air. But ultimately, the technology was limited by the very poor performance of batteries at the time. In 1831, Michael Faraday, one of Humphrey Davy's former assistants, discovered electromagnetic induction and created the first generator, known as the Faraday disk. Through the mid-1800s, improvements in generator technology led to more power. The first practical electric lights were based on Davy's 1806 carbon arc lamps, but they were powered by generators instead of batteries. Arc lamps became the first electric light sources in widespread use, but they were extremely bright, noisy, and difficult to deal with. They burned out quickly. You can see my video about carbon arc lamps for more about this. The carbon arc lamps operation effectively involves an oxidation of the carbon pieces. There were early experiments with incandescence, but one key missing piece was an effective vacuum pump that would remove the oxygen that would cause the oxidation. In other words, to keep the carbon or platinum from burning up, you needed a good vacuum. In 1835, James Bowman Lindsay demonstrated a constant electric lamp at a public demonstration in Scotland. Few technical details are known today, but this is considered by some to be the first example of incandescent light. In 1840, British scientist Warren de la Rue developed a bulb using coiled platinum inside a vacuum tube, but it was very expensive and thus not commercially viable. In 1841, British inventor Frederick de Molaines patented a design for an electric heated powder charcoal between two platinum wires in an evacuated glass tube. This was not commercially viable as the platinum filaments were too expensive and they burned out too quickly. In 1850, British physicist and chemist Joseph Swan began working on a lower cost lamp that used carbonized paper filaments. He demonstrated a working device by 1860, but the lack of a good vacuum prevented his design from having a long lifespan. In 1863, Swan demonstrated a vacuum pump in an attempt to solve this problem. In 1865, German chemist Hermann Sprengel invented the mercurial air pump, a tool that allows for the removal of air inside a glass bulb. It's notable that Sprengel conducted this research in London and likely would have been aware of Swan's research. With that said, Swan and Edison are both reported to have used Sprengel's design to evacuate air in their lamps. There were other inventors who worked on early incandescent lighting, included Moses G. Farmer, William E. Sawyer, Heinrich Goebel, Henry Woodward, and Matthew Evans. For various reasons, their lamps were not commercially viable. However, these inventors were significant nevertheless in the development of incandescent lighting. In 1878, Joseph Swan came up with a lamp that used a carbonized cotton thread inside a glass bulb with the air removed. 
The first public demonstration in December 1878 was a failure, but he succeeded the next month in January 1879. This lamp was able to stay lit for about 40 hours. The filament had low resistance, meaning the lamp had to be supplied with heavy copper wires. Swan improved the filament by treating cotton to produce parchmentized thread. He received a patent in November 1880 and began selling the bulb commercially throughout England. He started manufacturing the bulbs for commercial sale in 1881. Swan's home was the first in the world to have light bulbs installed, and the Savoy Theater in London was the first public building to be entirely lit by electric lighting with about 1,200 lamps. At a performance in 1881, the theater's builder purposely broke a powered light bulb in front of an audience to demonstrate its superior safety over gas lighting. Before we move on, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. It's a product that I helped develop, and it's inspired by the invention of the light bulb in the late 1800s. More than 70 million American adults are affected by poor sleep, and one of the major contributing factors to poor sleep is blue light before bed. You want blue light during the day, but too close to bedtime and it can disrupt the circadian rhythm. That's why I helped develop Bedtime Bulb. Bedtime Bulb is a light bulb you use in the evening that reduces sleep disrupting blue light. So all you have to do is screw it in, use it before you go to bed, and enjoy a healthier night of sleep. If you're interested in Bedtime Bulb, it's available at our website, bedtimebulb.com, and on Amazon. In what's considered to be a separate line of research and development from Swan, the American inventor Thomas Edison had tried hundreds of methods for making long-lasting incandescent lamps. At almost exactly the same time as Swan, Edison and his team came up with a working lamp that used a platinum filament in a vacuum inside a glass bulb. However, even in a vacuum, this lamp required way too much power. Because the platinum lamp was so inefficient, Edison then focused intensely on the economics of the lamp to devise a much more practical solution, being the businessman that he was. In late 1879, Edison swapped the platinum filament for carbon. He expected it to last for a few hours, but it ended up burning for two days straight. After testing nearly 6,000 materials, he settled on carbonized bamboo, which could burn for more than 1,200 hours. Edison's patent was approved in January 1880, and he quickly went public with it. Despite commercializing after Swan, Edison arguably created the first practical light bulb due to its longer lifespan, and he built a commercially viable power grid to go along with it. In 1882, Edison switched on two DC power stations in New York and London, powering streetlights and dozens of homes. The first public building to use Edison's electric lamps was a theater in Brno, which is now part of the Czech Republic. In 1878, American inventor Hiram Maxim created a process for more consistent manufacturing of carbon filaments so that the filaments would not burn up so quickly. He also became the chief scientist at the United States Electric Lighting Company, which became an Edison rival. Hiram may have also created a light bulb before Edison, but he had issues filing the patent because of a dispute with a former employee over who actually invented the light bulb. According to the patent laws at the time, if a patent was obtained fraudulently, it would become public domain. This is one of the main reasons Edison won the patent over Maxim. Regardless, Maxim's patent did not include one of the key claims of other bulbs, the evacuation of air to prevent early degradation of the filament. Edison's bulb was far from perfect, but in theory, his patent protected his business so that Edison was the only game in town in the early 1880s. American inventor George Westinghouse started selling his own electric lamps, but the Edison company quickly sued him. However, because Edison's patent discussed DC power, other inventors found ways around the patent. 
Nikola Tesla's alternating current was, at the time, a much more effective power transmission system over long distances, and it's still used today for most electrical grids. The American inventor Louis Latimer, who worked closely with Alexander Graham Bell on the telephone, began working with Hiram Maxim at the U.S. Electric Lighting Company in 1880. In 1881, along with Joseph Nichols, he patented an electric light bulb with a carbon filament that purportedly lasted longer than Edison's. However, it's unclear which version of Edison's bulb was inferior. The next year, Latimer received another patent, this time for the improvement of the production method of the filaments. In 1883, the United States Patent Office argued that Edison's patent was invalid because it was based on the work of William E. Sawyer. However, six years later, a judge ruled that Edison's claim for a filament of carbon of high resistance was valid. Edison tried to get a patent in the UK, but Joseph Swan already had a patent there. Edison ended up suing Swan, but the suit was not successful. The two, in turn, formed a joint venture in 1883 called Ediswan, which sold lamps throughout Great Britain and much of Europe. Ediswan lamps combined the best of both inventors' works using Swan's improved cellulose filaments. In 1884, Louis Latimer began to work for Edison as a patent investigator and expert witness, protecting Edison's inventions. Latimer also wrote the book Incandescent Electric Lighting. A practical description of the Edison system. Though the technology developed by Swan, Edison, Maxim, and others saw adoption in the 1880s and 1890s, it would still be several decades before the technology was in widespread use. Edison envisioned the light bulb as something for the cities of America to light up the streets and the homes of the wealthy. Poorer areas of cities were slower to adopt the technology. Only much later, in the 1930s and 40s, did much of rural America get power grids and electric light. So let's get back to the main question: Who invented the light bulb? In my opinion, it doesn't really matter who invented it because before there was a commercially viable light bulb, there were decades of research and development, lots of trial and error. And there were many who were named in this video, but there were countless others whose names were forgotten by history. What really matters is the outsized impact this technology had on human progress, and for that, we can thank everyone involved. In future videos, I'll look at the technological improvements that made incandescent lighting popular for more than a century. I'll also look at the technologies that came after incandescent and expanded the possibilities of what we could do with lighting. With that said, I want to say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.